Hey, good afternoon. We are going to do a transitions video today. We're actually going to do just a field trial of transitions signature seven versus generation eight. This is not scientific. It's just to kind of see what's going on with these things. It is about one o'clock in outside of Waco, Texas. It is hot outside and the sun is shining brightly. We have our little test set up here. I have a signature seven blank that is in amber and a generation eight blank that is in gray. So the amber will never get quite as dark as the gray, but we're still gonna see how quickly they change and then try to see if we can test them for how quickly they change back. Props to my daughter for being the camera person today. Hello. I will give a few details about the history of transitions uh, as we fade back, but the first part is gonna be just to see how quickly these fade, and I did a test run, and they they darken pretty doggone quickly. And then we'll bring them back inside after five minutes, and then we'll see kind of how long it takes them to fade back, or how quickly they fade back, while I give some more um, details on the history of the generations going back to generation five. Again, props to my friend and counterpart, Jason Lassier, who's with Vision Valet and Optical Management Resources in South Texas. This is J.R. Dollins. I am with Vision Valet and Optical Management Resources in North Texas. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, again, on to phase two of our non-scientific field trial, okay? I'm gonna open the door, I'm gonna back up, I'm gonna pull off this opaque folder, I'm gonna hit the start button, and we will be off to the races. It's now sunshine, so. No immediate clouds. And here we go. Bright sunshine now. So it's hard for me to even see that. Where's the start button? Right there? Yeah. Okay, same time. Three, two, one, start. Yeah, it started. Yep, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, six, seven, eight, nine, by 10 seconds. Wow, we're already pretty dark. But you can see the difference in how much darker the eight is versus the seven. And here we are at 18, 19, 20 seconds. Very dark. 26, 27, 28, 29. 30 seconds all right we're going to go on a little bit of a hiatus and we'll check back here in a couple of minutes all right we're now uh, just slightly over two minutes you can see they're both fully activated it says they don't quite get to full activation for five minutes but i don't know how they're going to get much darker than this we'll let them sit for a little while longer and check back here in five minutes and then we'll tell the history of transitions and some other things some other technical details during the fade back time. Good. All right. Hey, we are behind a cloud. The cloud came out a bit, little over a minute ago. So you can see up there, the sun's clearly behind a cloud. It's very sunny still outside. I don't know if there was some fade back or not, perhaps some, but we're now gonna go inside and start to time our fade back. So I'm gonna stop my timer. I'm gonna reset. And then as soon as we go inside, I will set it again and we're going to film this whole segment okay so all the way back in the house okay i'm going to go ahead and start the timer looks like i'm fading back a little bit now even though i'm in the sunshine but there's a cloud we go back in the house My camera person is coming with me we're at 10 seconds and we're going to close the door Click. and we're fading back all right so a little bit about transitions as we go to fade back. I mean, we're 23 seconds in, 24, 25. Let's see what we look like at 30. 30 seconds into this fade back, and it's going really well. Um, both of them are fading back, but it really does look like to me that the generation eight is fading back faster than the seven, even though the seven wasn't as dark whenever it started. So pretty good field trial at this time. We'll check in here in a minute. Um, you may or may not know that transitions is a chemical reaction. There are molecules in the blank that actually react to the UV wavelengths. And those molecules actually turn to the side 
therefore creating the opaque or tinting uh, of the color. And then whenever they deactivate, they turn back to and line up in a certain way so they're not blocking the sun's rays or out, outside light so that you can see more clearly and they, they get more clear. Um, history here is gonna go back to about generation five. Um, recognize that the molecules in generation five worked for about three to five years. Um, the time on generation five was five minutes for, um, for comfort, what they call comfort, and there's not really a measure for comfort level, right? It's like maybe when you stop squinting. And then 15 minutes for the full darkness potential of them at that time, all right? So since it's a chemical reaction that's happening, chemical reactions die off after a while. And think of the lens in layers, right? So the outside layer operates and then eventually it dies off. And then the next layer operates and eventually it dies off. One of the issues with generation five is, is that the molecules of the reaction, whenever the reaction stopped and or died off, the molecules stayed in a darkened or activated state. Okay. So that didn't allow the light to pass through cleanly to the lower layers or the farther back layers in the lens. Therefore, after 300 hours or so, the activity or the effectiveness of those older transitions didn't work very much. By the way, in the old days, uh, you they were also heat activated. So, or let's say absence of heat activated. In a colder state, uh, the molecules were more tightly packed together so they actually reacted better and vibrated better against each other in a cold state rather than a hot state. That was kind of interesting to me. Um, so anyway, we had about three to five years of normal use, normal use farmer being different from an office employee. So that's why they say three to five years, three to five years of normal use in generation five. Let's go on to generation six. In generation six, the changes were dying to a clear state. By the way, you can see we're past three minutes now, so we're approaching and we're getting pretty clear. We'll see how much clearer we get. Um, generation six, they die to a clear state. They would last for about 800 hours of use. Uh, so that's five to seven years of use. And they feel as dark on day 100 as they did on the first day, right? Because even though the layers are still there, whenever the top layers began to die off or the chemical reaction stopped happening. They died off to a clear state, therefore allowing the UV rays to get to the lower layers and still activate. So it was a much, that was a big improvement from generation five to generation six. In generation seven, they introduced what was called chromia technology. And so the molecules were more reactive to indirect UV light, which is not unlike what we had today. We had a cloud or someone wearing a hat, like a cowboy hat or a baseball cap. So they're still pretty reactive in that type of a situation. Also, Generation 7, heat was no longer a direct effector on the transition's activation, right? Um, we also went from a 2% clarity in the fadeback mode to 1% clarity, so 1% uh, of darkness. So uh, let me say that obvious differently. Um, the lenses used to be in generations five and six, 98% clear. And now in generation seven, we go to 99% clear. Okay. Another change in generation seven, because of the chromia technology and how quick, quickly they were reacting. We went, when we go from darkness or indoors to outdoors, we're 30 seconds to comfort level. So to stop squinting, we'll say, and then five minutes for full darkness potential. That's the same basically in generation eight, but then we have 800 hours or five to seven years of normal use, okay? Now, what's different about generation eight? The price is a little more expensive. Uh, most places are seeing about an $8 increase on generation eight versus generation seven. By the way, these blanks came out on July the 10th. You likely have already dispensed some as today is uh, August the 16th and they Seven blanks were picked up in CR39 and Poly, 
and 167 and replaced with generation 8 blanks. So it was a clean sweep across the nation. Those old blanks were picked up. The new generation 8 blanks were set out. And so um, now we're in generation 8 on brown and gray for plastic poly and 167. Um, we'll have Trivex in brown and gray sometime in November. And then after the first of the year, the fashion colors will be generation eight, as well as graphite green will be out in many more um, materials. So now we're on to generation eight. What's the difference? They're saying 30% darker. It did look darker. It's not quite a fair comparison that we did today because it's a field trial and we used gray and brown. So the gray is always a little bit darker than the brown, but they definitely look darker to me. And they say three minute fade back, faster fade back to clear. Um, they did fade back at a faster rate, but I'm not sure that they were more clear during that fade back time, but you can look at the video and see. All right. A um, couple of other things about them, about transitions. Um, the original photochromic material or whatever it was called silver highlight. It was in glass only. Um, and you had to activate them in the old days up until, you know, mid to early nineties, uh, early to mid nineties by putting them in the freezer for a period of time to get them cold. Remember those molecules activate better whenever they're closer together. So when they were cold, they did better than whenever they were hot. Uh, Transitions was actually created by NASA along with many other inventions that we use all the time, like Teflon, AstroTurf, stuff like that. But NASA did the first transitions. And the reason they did it is because they needed the, uh, the windows on any types of manned spacecraft back in the day to change from light to dark pretty quickly. Um, it was almost immediate that they could do it back in the old, back in the NASA days. And we still have that technology. The reason we don't do that today is for cost reasons, as well as because your eye can't adjust that quickly. And it would be more shocking if it adjusts any more rapidly than it does now. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, also be advised that Abbey value, um, anti-reflective coating and your index, um, for different materials also have an effect on how well transitions work. So, you know, uh, even though CR 39 might have the best transitions action in speed and quality of transitions or darkness of transitions, we're going to say a mid index with an AR is going to work very, very well. So as you can see now, we're already up to over eight minutes, approaching nine minutes. That is our video on transitions. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. We have seen some differences in this field trial between signature seven and signature eight. And again, this video, as all videos on this channel, are sponsored by Vision Valet. Join today.